Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Tech Tested. Today we're going to be talking about the graphics card I accidentally bought for $25. One day I was scrolling through eBay as one does, looking for various computer hardware components. And when I stumbled across this HD 5870, it was listed for $25 plus shipping. But the listing did accept offers, so I decided to drop an offer of $15. Lo and behold, the seller accepted it immediately, and before I knew it, on my doorstep was a new graphics card. Now there's a couple reasons I thought the HD 5870 was an interesting buy. This graphics card was released all the way back in 2009, which makes it quite dated by today's standards. However, when it was released, it was the top performing single GPU solution that existed at the time, beating out the GTX 285. In addition, upon its release, it was the first graphics card to feature DirectX 11 support. Not only was it a top performer, but it also sipped power at 188 watt TDP, requiring only two six pin PCIe power connectors. Sporting one gigabyte of GDDR5 VRAM, by today's standards, that's quite low, but at the time, it was more than enough. Oh, and what about that look? This is a reference design cooler, and in my personal opinion, it is one of the prettiest graphics cards ever released. That sleek black design, that racing stripe down the middle, and those two exhaust ports coming out the back, I mean, come on. It doesn't get to look much better than that. Doesn't get to look any better than that. Now as a blower design card, you would assume that the noise level is rather high. It was louder than a non-reference design card would be, but thanks to the low TDP and the lack of need to dissipate that much heat, it really stayed much quieter than I was expecting. It does have this really awkward wing on the end, which may be mistaken for a spoiler, but from what I understand, the cards with these wings were from pre-built systems, and this was clearly pulled from a pre-built and sold on the used market. Without the wing, it would be roughly the exact same length as my reference design 5700 XT. However, the wing makes it significantly longer and it barely fit in my computer case. All right, now we need to get onto the part that you're all here to see, which is the benchmarks. I slapped this into my primary system, seeing as how that is the most powerful PC I have right now, sporting a Xeon E5 1680V2 and 32 gigabytes of RAM. First up is CSGO, and as you can see, we got a very respectable 69 frames per second. But if you notice in the top left corner, our CPU is actually our bottleneck running at 100% utilization. That's partly because we're running on an older architecture, Ivy Bridge, and also because we're running bot matches, so that's extra workload for the CPU. If we had a better CPU or were playing online, we would actually see better results from this game. Next up we have Overwatch, and at 1080p resolution with the low preset and 100% render scaling, we saw a very enjoyable 103 frames per second on average, with very few dips, usually just when you load into the map. Moving on to Fortnite at 1080p, again with the low presets and max resolution scale, we saw an amazing 121 frames per second on average, with virtually no dips at all that could be perceived, a very enjoyable playing experience. Next up is Apex Legends. At 1080p on the low settings, we weren't actually able to reach 30 frames per second on average. However, if you dropped it down to 720p, we were able to reach 40 frames per second on average. It was a playable experience, but again, you would have to drop that resolution. Now there's something you might've noticed. We didn't use our typical benchmark suite. We didn't use Heaven, Fire Strike, Tomb Raider, or Far Cry, and the reason is, this card really struggles to run any of those titles. Running all of those, we average somewhere around 20 frames per second, which tells you that this card is definitely not equipped to handle modern titles. Also, it completely lacks DirectX 12 support, which is what most modern games are gonna be running on. So what I'm saying is, that's why we chose to test eSports, which this card might actually be capable of handling. So what's the point? This graphics card clearly can't handle modern titles, but does that make it irrelevant? Normally, I would say yes. However, we are in a massive GPU shortage right now. Just to put it into perspective, the 5700 XT I bought brand new the week it launched for $400 is now worth roughly $1,200 used. Yeah, that's how bad things are. The other factor you have to consider here is the stopgap solution until the graphics card market stabilizes. Right now, an R9 290X is going for over $200, and an R9 390 is pushing $300. GTX 970s, $250 to $300. 
And the problem is, if you go out and spend two to three hundred dollars on one of those, when the graphics card market stabilizes, they're going to be worth closer to fifty dollars. So you essentially just threw away $150 to $250. Using the integrated graphics on an Intel chip is still a really painful experience. Maybe you were lucky and able to pick up one of the new AMD APUs. However, if you're like most people, you went and got a regular Ryzen chip. That's where this card starts to make a lot more sense. Sure, you won't be able to play a lot of modern titles, but you could play some esports and some retro games in the meantime while you wait for your new graphics card. And at $25, even if this thing becomes worth literally pennies once the market stabilizes, you are still throwing away a lot less money than if you bought a GTX 970 or an R9 390. Unfortunately, these cards right now are going on the used market for about $50, which I think is a little bit too much. However, if you can nab one of these for about $25, that was after shipping by the way, I would actually recommend going this route as a stopgap if you are okay with playing less demanding titles that might actually run on this card. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, follow us on our social media platforms, and check out our website and our Discord so you can pick yourself up some tech test and merch. And yeah, our Discord is actually kind of active and has some really cool people, so you should actually go check that out. And see if this card might be right for you.